Hello and welcome everyone. In this today's video, we'll be learning how to make this kind of honeycomb mesh pattern onto a basket or onto a bucket. Uh, you can say onto a pen stand as well or any particular design you want. So our goal or main motto over here is to create this kind of shape. Okay, using the honeycomb mesh pattern, what I have just shown over here in the fastest and easiest way. Okay, so which involves very less number of sketching. Okay, and most of the things will be done by pattern feature and you know other set of commands. So let us start. I'll close this file and the file is already saved so I don't need to save it. Now I'll start a new file. Now if you want to save the file, you can define a name and you can define proper location where you want to save it. Otherwise, you can simply click OK and you can start with a new part file and you can follow along. The first sketch what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to create a sketch on the top plane, that is a default plane. And here I'm going to create a circle from the origin of diameter 300. Okay, so the diameter of this particular pattern geometry is going to be 300. Okay, so that is the reason I'm creating a circle here of diameter 300. Now along with that, I'm going to create one line at a slight angle over here and the line starting from the center of the circle and it is coming outside the circle and it is not properly vertical, it is at an angle and here I'm going to use the trim command to get rid of the extra part of the line. Now once I'm done with that, then I'm going to select the Y axis and the line itself to create an angle over here. So for example here, I'm going to create an angle of 7.5 which is exactly half of 15. Now, if you know me uh, and if you have seen the previous videos, uh, you will understand why exactly I'm defining this particular angle because this will help me in future for creating a proper pattern. Now, after completing this, I'm going to click on finish. Okay, so I have a sketch in which I have a circle and a line and the line is not exactly straight or exactly vertical. It is at an angle of 15 degree. Now, I'll press escape. Now, I'll click on extrude. Pressing escape was very important because that will deselect any selected geometries. Now I'll click on extrude and here in single curve, I'm going to select the circle. Now this particular circle, I want to extrude it with a height of 100 for the sake of just extruding it. And I want it to be symmetrical, like it should go uh, up by 50% and down by 50. So this is how exactly it's going to look like. Now after creating an extrude, I'm going to click OK. Now here I'm going to now create a datum plane. So for creating a datum plane, I'm going to click on this command called datum plane. And here I'm going to select the cylindrical face itself. And by default, I'll get a datum plane. But if you remember, my line was somewhere over here. So I want my datum plane exactly in front of the line. So to do that, I'm going to select this plane, which is in front of Y axis. Okay, the XZ plane to be specific. Okay, so the XZ plane, this is one uh, I'm going to select. And here in angle option, either you can choose value, perpendicular or parallel. I'm going to select parallel and make sure the plane is coming exactly in this side. Now here, if I click OK, this is how the plane is going to look like. Now, if I hide my extrude, the plane is exactly in the same position where the line is. Okay, so we cannot hide extrude while creating the plane because the one of the selection is the cylindrical surface. So that will ruin the selection. So now I can hide my extrude and now I can create a sketch on this particular data plane. Now, in this particular uh, example, I'm going to use a command called wrap. Now, if you want to know more about that particular command, you can let me in the comment section below so that I can create a separate video on how to use wrap and what exactly we can do with wrap. Now here I'm creating a sketch and what I'm doing is I'm creating a six sided polygon starting from here and just randomly placing it somewhere over here. Now making sure any one side of the polygon stays horizontal. Okay, any one side of the polygon stays horizontal and this particular point and this particular point coincide with each other. Okay, so this particular point and the end point of that line coincide with each other. Technically that line end point is basically the size of my polygon. Okay. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click on offset command over here. Here I'm going to select connected curve as a curve rule. I'm going to create an offset of 2 mm and here I'm going to select the entire geometry. Create dimension option will be on. Offset will go inside. Okay. Symmetry option or uh, symmetry offset option will be off and convert input to reference will be on. Okay. So make sure convert input to reference is on and if once that is particularly done and I can now click OK. Now what I can do is I can click on mirror. And here I can choose connected curve again in a curve rule. I can select the inner polygon which was offsetted by 2 mm. And here in the center line, I'm going to select this particular center line, the one which is on the right side. Now you can select the upper one or the lower one, any one you want to, but only of these, any one of these four you can select, not the top and bottom. Okay. So here I have created this two particular polygon. I'll click on finish. Now I can show my extrude and hide my previous sketch. Okay. I need my datum plane to be visible for a while. Now I'll click on curve command or the curve tab and here inside the derived curve group, you will find one option called wrap and wrap curve. Now, if you are using any older version, you can still follow along. Don't worry about it. The process is going to be the same. Only thing is you might find, you might not find the command over here. 
So in that case, you can also use the search bar, okay, in order to search for that particular command. Now here I'll click on wrap and wrap curve. And here inside wrap and wrap, I'm going to select the option called wrap. Now here I'm going to select the curves, the two curves, connected curves. So the two polygons need to be selected. Now here in the face, I'm going to select a single face, that is this particular cylindrical face. And here inside plane, I'm going to click on select object, not specify plane, select object. And I'm going to select this plane because it is already created. Now once this is done, all the three selections are done, I'll click OK. Okay, and then I can hide my sketch as well as my data plane. So this is how the curve has been wrapped. And there is a huge difference between wrapping a curve and projecting a curve. So if you want to know more about it, please let me know in the comment section below. I'll create a proper video explaining the difference between project curve as well as wrap and wrap curve. Okay. Now what I need to do next is I'll go to the home tab. I'll click on more uh, tab over here or more button over here. Then I'll click on divide face. I'll select this particular body as a face to be divided. And here in tool, I'm going to select the two polygons. And once that is done, you can click OK. Now the face has been divided. Now once the face is divided, you can go to the surface tab and click on thicken command. Here the thickness will be fire, subtract option will be selected and single face. I'm going to select this face and this face. Now once you select both the faces, you have to click on the flip button to make it go inside. Okay, it should not come outside. And here I can click OK to get the subtract ready. Okay, again, there is a huge difference between uh, extrude, and extrude and thicken. Okay, in this particular scenario. So if you want to know more about that, please let me know. Because some of you might feel the extrude will do the work, but technically no, extrude will not do the work over here for the kind of design we are going to prepare. Now here I'm going for arrange blend and I'm creating a radius of five or six also you can create. And here I'm selecting each curve one by one. If you are using a newer version like me, you can simply click on this select predicted object. Okay, so that you can make the selection faster. Otherwise, you can select one by one all the six uh, edges. Okay, once the six edges are selected, I can click OK. And now this particular thing is now filleted. Now again, I'll go for edge blend. This time I'll set the radius. Make sure you set the radius first. Otherwise, the software will, uh, you know, take a while to understand what radius you are providing to which area. So I'll set the radius to 1.5. You can also set a higher or a lower value. Now here, tangent curve is the curve rule, selection rule. I'm just, I'm going to select the base of this and the base of this, base edge of this and the base edge of this. And here I'm going to click OK. So this is how it's going to look like. Now from the front, I want it to look sharp and flat. So I'm not going to provide any fillet over here on the top edge itself. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one command called trim body. Now, if I click on this command over here inside the home tab, trim body, I can select the body itself. And then inside the trim plane, I can select this plane. So let's say the XY plane. Now, once I select the XY plane, it is trimming that particular body with the help of XY plane. Now, it is leaving the bottom part of the body for me, but I'll click on flip to make sure the top part of the body is remain. So, technically what I did is I just subtracted this polygon in half or I just cut the polygon in half using the trim body feature. Now, similar thing I want to do over here as well. So, for doing that properly, I'll show my sketch, okay, which was just before the wrap command. Okay, you can see the wrap command here and I'll show my sketch here. I'll click on uh, trim body command. Now here you have to pay proper attention. Target body will be this. In tool option, you are going to select specifically new plane option. In the previous condition, you can either select face plane or new plane, doesn't matter. But for this one, you have to select new plane option and the plane construction will be set to inferred. Then here in specify plane, I'm going to select this plane. Okay, and also I'm going to select this end point. Okay, make sure you select the plane as well as the end point so that the height of the plane will be decided. And this is what I need to subtract the upper part. Again, I don't want to subtract the lower part. So technically what I did here is I just made both the polygons half. Okay. Now to complete one polygon at least, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on more. Okay. Uh, or before that, you can even pattern this first. So I'll just go for pattern face in this condition because that will be faster. Tangent faces, this and this face. Now here, make sure the values are properly set before you select the vector that is count and span. Count will be 16 for now and the span will be 360. And once all the things are properly set, then click on specify vector and select Z axis. Otherwise, your PC will take a lot of time in order to comp compute what exactly is going to happen if you set a wrong value. Now here, I'll click OK. And my pattern is also ready. So don't worry about it. You can even do the pattern before trimming. That will not technically hurt. So like, for example, if you do the pattern before trimming, this is how the body is going to look like. Okay, and if you do the pattern after trimming, this is how the body is going to look like. Doesn't really matter because it's the same. Now here, in, I'll click on more and now I'll click on pattern geometry. 
Now, once I click on pattern geometry, I'm going to select this geometry. And in plane, I'm going to select the top face. Make sure you select the top face properly. I'll click OK. And now I have a complete single polygon over here. Now, once I have that, now I can click on unite. I can unite the bottom with the top. And here I can click OK. Now, next thing what I want to do is I want to create a pattern. Okay, so that I can increase the height of this particular entire thing. So here I can click on more. I can go to pattern geometry again. Now here I'll just click on reset. Now this is the geometry which I want to pattern. I want to go in the linear direction. The vector will be this upward direction. Now as of now I'm only getting two copies. That is fine for me. But the pitch is something which I want to know. So if I give the pitch of 35, this is how it's going to look like. So there will be a gap between the objects. So I want to cre create a proper pitch. Now to create a proper pitch, I need to know the exact height of this particular part. And if I don't know that, don't worry about it. You can click on this arrow. You can click on measure and you can take a measurement right away. So for example, here, I want to define the height as a measurement between these two objects. So here I'm selecting these two objects. I'm clicking OK. And the height will be exactly the measurement of that two objects. And here the measure symbol will show that is uh, basically this is derived from a measurement. Now here I want 13 of that. So I'll click on, th I'll enter 13 in count. And 33.9117 is something, uh, is the pitch distance. If you want, you can provide a similar value or you can also change the value slightly. Now here I'll click OK. Now if you want to make it a little faster, you can just turn off the preview uh, so that you will not see the preview what is happening. Because the, time, the amount of time it takes to generate the preview, that same amount of time it also takes to generate the model itself. Okay. So technically, if you just turn off the preview, you will save half the time, you know, of the creating this kind of model. And I'm going to turn off my preview when I'm creating my Unite. So for example, this particular part is done. Now I'll click on Unite. I'll deactivate preview for the first thing I'm going to do that is deactivate the preview. I'm going to select one body and here I'm going to select all the rest. If preview is on, it will take a while over here to load how exactly it's going to look, whether it's going to Unite or not. I'm going, I'm pretty sure that this is going to happen. So I'm just going to click OK. And this is the same amount of time it will take to generate the preview if preview was on technically. But now the preview is off, so it will not take that much of time in order to generate what exactly is going to happen. So I'll wait for a couple of minutes. Now when you see updating object over here, okay, that means it is almost ready. Okay, so that means your, uh, you know, extrude is almost completed. So this is how it's going to look like. Now, next thing what I want to do is I want to add some small part on the top and some small part in the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch here on the top. Okay. For the top, I'm going to create a circle. Let's say of diameter 310. Okay. And I'll click on finish. I'll click on extrude. Here I'll choose, uh, let's say none for now. Inside curve, I'm going to select the circle. And here I want to extrude it with a height of 25 with unite option selected. And here I'll click OK. So now I'm happy with this kind of unite over here on the top. Okay, so I'll hide my sketch. Now again, I'll create a sketch in the bottom. And here again, I'll create a circle of the same diameter 310 or you can also make it equal to the top circle. I'll click on finish. You can also get this with revolve if you want to. And here I'm going to create an extrude of 545. I'll click OK. Okay, this time I want to make sure it is not united. Okay, so for now, it shouldn't be united. So make sure it is set to none. Okay, for the bottom part, it should not be united. Unite will do it after some time. Now, why we are going to do unite after some time? Because we are going to shell this body from the bottom. I am going to give it a thickness of 10. 10 or 15, whatever you like. And here I am going to click OK. And also I am going to provide some edge blend in the bottom. Before I start defining any uh, you know particular thing to it. So for example, here I'm going to provide a radius of 10 again, 10 or 15, and I'll click OK. Now I'm going to unite this. Okay, so again, it is going to take a while. So I'll click on Unite. Make sure preview is off. This is the tool target body, and this is the tool body. And here I'm going to click OK. It is going to take a while. So please hold on. Okay, once the unit is ready, then what I can do is I can go for edge blend again. And then I can select, uh, let's say I want to give a radius of 10 for now. So I'll just setting the radius of 10. And here I'm going to select the outer edge over here, the top outer edge. Okay. So if you want to save time, you can again deactivate preview if you want to. And here again, the outer edge. 
I'm selecting and I'm clicking OK over here to create a proper fillet on the top and bottom. Now the next part is pretty simple. I just need to make the body hollow from inside. Okay, and to do that, I can simply create a cut. Okay, because shelling the body, uh, you know, of this particular factor, it will take a lot of time. So I'll just simply create a circle here. Let's say I want to create a inner diameter of 285. So I'm just defining the diameter of 285, clicking on finish, choosing to extrude. I want to go down and here I'll choose subtract. Now this might take a while to update the preview again. Okay, because the subtract has a heavier preview. Now here in place of value, I'm going to select until selected and I'm going to select the plane itself. So the plane, the top plane, uh, till there, I want to create a cut. So once the top plane is selected, I'm going to click OK. Now this will again take a while, uh, you know, for generating the preview for clicking OK. Now once this particular part is done, this is how the body is going to look like. Now I'll add some radius again, edge blend. Now here I'll set the radius of three to the upper two edges. And then I'll click on add and add a radius over here. Let's say of 40 for the inner edge. So this is how this entire body is going to look like. Okay, then you can give color if you want to, or you can also go to view tab, choose perspective, style shaded and studio. And you can hide your uh, datum plane in the center to make it much more better look. Or you can also create a rendering of this. Okay, if you so wish to. Okay, so this is how the thing is going to look like. Okay, I'll go and deactivate the datum plane. Okay, so I hope you understand how to create this kind of geometries inside NX. Okay, and I hope you, uh, you know, understand clear with how, you know, easy it is to use NX itself. Okay, so thank you very much for watching this video. Have a great day.